Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy, LT the Sage, coming to you with another, that's right, another Nightly Ninja Talk. And tonight we're doing something different. I know usually I give you multiple different um, uh, topics from the MMO and RBG landscape. But today and tonight, we are going to be doing something very special. The TWAB Thursdays, we're going to have to maybe do a Destiny Thursday TWAB uh, special episode uh, because information is going to be dropping every week on that thir- TWAB with Destiny and Bungie. And so they did drop some information on Void Subclass 3.0. If you watch my previous Nightly Ninja Talk episode, you know we talked about the new light subclasses. They're not going to be any new darkness subclasses. They're going to revamp with the new the new systems they're going to revamp the light subclasses so you know that we have to go into what they're thinking for the void because we're very excited for when they do the lightning class i can't wait until the storm class storm caller um even the uh i might even start a titan if it really looks sweet what they're going to do with those So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and move forward. Again, if you love the content on Nightly Ninja Talk, again, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be other videos coming, other topics. We're uh, encompassing big MMO and RPG news, and it's all catered to you. So let me know down in the description below what information you would like me to put in these videos. If you want more gameplay, if you want gameplay footage, if you want video footage, trailer footage, whatever it is that you guys want. I will provide so make sure you put in the description down below exactly what you're looking for um, and we're going to go ahead and move forward on the next um, slide here and just give my overview thoughts of what we're going to be looking at the new void subclass 3.0 is what the developers are calling it over at Bungie this is going to encompass all of the void subclasses so that's uh night stalker um that is the bow super for the hunters um also the sentinel shield super and of course the void walker supers and specials for your warlocks out there um and so they're gonna go into pretty fine detail look that i kind of did a skim real quick on the twab they're gonna go into real specific detail on these subclasses so stay tuned uh we're gonna get right into it and read it together see you there into the void so we're gonna go over step by step line by line we're gonna go into what the twab is discussing on these new subclasses and what they're thinking and i'll stop every so often and go over my thoughts into the void starting in the witch queen we'll be aiming to give light classes the stasis treatment season over season bringing more customization to guardians and new ways to engage with their abilities while the team is still deep in development sandbox discipline lead kevin Gaines, my boy kevin and gameplay designer samuel dunn are joining us to walk through their goals for abilities and what the upcoming reworks will bring to the table kevin hey everyone my band kevin yanes kevin from the abilities team here to share some sweet details about what's coming next by the time this gets posted i assume you all had the opportunity to see what's cooking here in the bungee digital kitchens the world characters and story are all moving forward and things are and things are changing big time destiny 2 is evolving and that means the sandbox needs to evolve with it previously i laid out a roadmap of changes that got us to season 15 with some vague hints about the future. Now that we're here, I want to plant more flags in the ground about where we're going next. Straight to business. Throughout Tuesday's reveal, we watch as you all reacted to the Witch Queen, Season of the Lost, and the 30th anniversary where they did uh, uh, announce the Gallahorn and the Luke Cave uh, Luke Cave Raid or Dungeon is coming out. Dungeon. Uh, part of those reactions were on the were on the subjects like subclasses and stasis aspects and fragments. I feel that before we move forward, we should rip a few bandages off. There will be no new darkness subclass with the Witch Queen or through year five. So that's all throughout the next year, 2022 into 23. Uh, Lightfall, no new darkness subclasses. We made the call to refocus ourselves on light subclasses this year. As you'll see below, this doesn't just mean a port, but also new and exciting stuff too. And that's big. That means they're going to add stuff to what's already there. There are no new stasis aspects and fragments arriving along season of the loss. So stasis will relatively stay the same throughout next season. Similar to above, we wanted to focus on different initiatives instead of adding more to stasis. We feel like the subclass build varieties in a good spot and was likely to benefit from tuning changes more than new stuff. 
To that end, we prioritize the season on the Lost Balance patch and another patch you'll hear about below, debuting with the 30th anniversary. On the 30th anniversary, I didn't cover it too much in detail because um, and we may do a video on it, but $25 for the 30th anniversary package to kind of tie us over into the next year, February, for the big expansion. Um, I'm a little shaky on the $25 price point, but we're, we'll touch on that on another video. Combat Reforged. Today, you're going to read a quick tease on a feature we're calling Void. 3.0, a new interpretation of the voice subclasses and fantasies. In the coming weeks, you'll hear about changes we're making to how players regenerate ability energy and how those changes are going to affect PVE and PVP with our 30th anniversary release. A few examples of changes in the pipe, a reduction to how many one shot kill abilities are available in the crucible. That's big and shifting super energy re regeneration. So players are rewarded for participating, participating in combat versus waiting for a timer. Later in year five, we hope to share more info on an initiative the team is discussing internally right now, making ammo, regener gen ammo generation a more deterministic and consistently paced experience across all platforms. Oh, oh, sorry, activities. I hope what I'm describing here paints a clear picture. The game is evolving for the better. And so this is very interesting. It looks like they're going to be uh, kind of curtailing the way the meta is right now with supers being the the focal point of combat and pvp and pve and kind of making it into more of the inner the intertwines between you and your special and your super to make you stronger in between those time frames because there is some points where i do feel like until i get my special or super i can't really make noise um, with my abilities destiny 2 is a living game and as we head into our fifth year, we're looking at how we can involve the sandbox, you know, and love to not only create exciting new experiences, but to better polish ones that haven't had much love since our launch in 2017. We've learned a lot over the years with each iteration of the sandbox, and we're hoping to apply those learnings through year five and beyond. I hope you are all as excited about the future as I am. The Brave, and this looks pretty sick. This looks like he has like a little mini, the mini Nova bomb. Man, the it, just the detail into that in this picture is amazing. Brave New World. As you saw in our reveal event, we're going to be doing serious revamps to the existing light subclasses in Destiny 2. Our Void, Solar, and Arc subclasses. Can't wait for Arc. I hope that's not the order. I hope I don't have to wait to the end of uh, the arc, uh, end of the seasons for the arc subclasses and damages types have been with Destiny from the very beginning. In fact, some of the player fantasies and mechanics in Destiny 2 today are the same that debuted with Destiny 1 back in 2014. And while we've had refreshes in 2017 and 2018 with Destiny 2 and Forsaken, these subclasses have in some cases been left behind by the new power bar and build crafting goals of the game. To help solve that problem, we're going to take these subclasses back into the shop to ret retrofit, remix, and reinterpret the gameplay fantasies and mechanics by integrating them in the modern subclass experience. In Destiny 2 Beyond Light, we introduced a new subclass system. We dubbed internally as Subclass 3.0. The goals of Subclass 3.0 were to create an experience that gave players more customization akin to Destiny 1, while also meaningfully evolving that experience. To us, the developers, Destiny is best when build crafting. Best in class action and power fantasy all meet to create gameplay experiences you can't get anywhere else. And I really want to see them emphasize build crafting. I think that's what the game is lacking right now. Though those power fantasies, they have those. They kind of tick a lot of those boxes with the power fantasies, whether you want to be a space warlock, whether you want to be a, a you know, a, a sentinel shield wielding a defender. They have the power fantasy is there. Um, but the build crafting, be able to build into those um, into those fantasies, I feel like is what needs to be worked on. Staring out into the void. With Void 3.0, we're taking the subclasses you know and love and remixing them. That means adding new abilities and mechanics, ditching some old ones where it makes sense to do so, and spreading out existing ones to create enticing new combinations. Our hope is to retain playstyles you know and love today and to create some exciting new ones you didn't even know you wanted. 
We can't wait to see what you all think about these changes. And as always, we're going to be looking for and responding to feedback. With all that said and done, I'm going to bow out and let the team do the talking. Sam, howdy everyone. I'm Sam Dunn, abilities designer on the Sandbox team. I'm here to, divide, to dive into a little more detail about what you can expect from Void 3.0. Let's go ahead and jump into Void 3.0 and a new shape. A new shape. As Kevin detailed above, we're in the process of updating Void, Solar, and Arc in the new subclass 3.0 system used by Stasis, where you can pick and choose from a selection of supers, grenades, melees, and aspects, and fragments to craft cool and unique builds tailored around your playstyle. In the Witch Queen, you'll experience the first phase of this metamorphosis as you wield the powers of the Void in your fight against Savathun and her, least, her lucent brood. I love saying brood. I don't know if y'all do, but I, I love saying brood. It's important to reiterate that this update will change things. Destiny 2 has evolved significantly in the three years since Forsaken, and we believe that the light subclasses need a shakeup to keep pace. Much of the Void gameplay that you know and love will continue to exist, albeit in a different form. A few things won't be returning, and there are some exciting new additions we think you'll have a blast with. To paint the picture of how we're approaching the Void 3.0 rework, here are our main goals. Preserve the strong existing power fantasies of Void. We want to focus on what makes the damage type fun to use and give it a cohesive identity that can be felt throughout your subclass while also adding sweet new toys that feel like a natural extension of your void powers. Perfect. Provide new and exciting build crafting possibilities through the combination of aspects and fragments. This is what I'm looking for. We want you to not only be able to craft similar playstyles to the old subclass diamonds using the new system, but also to explore a bunch of new ways that your void abilities can work together with your armor and weapons. Set up a framework for the systematic integration of the damage type into the rest of the game. We believe that Stasis was very successful in providing a set of shared combat behaviors or verbs that can interact with each other and with other elements in the game. With Void, we want to double down on this effort and reorganize the subclasses in a similar way. And we're planning to continue this with Solar and Art going forward. And so just to step back one second, I'm going to go ahead and think, give you my ideas of what I'm thinking before I even read forward because I haven't read anything on it. The void subclass to me seems like something that should provide some type of uh, debilitation effect um, on enemies. Um, and it's also going to block out specials, supers, and maybe stop um, other enemies, not in a stasis way. Stasis stops movement, right? So maybe this, um, so maybe void takes away energy uh, so that um, hive knights can't shoot blast cannons or th those things like that they can melee you still they can still move and melee but they will no longer be able to use their energy weapons um and then solar again over time effects and this is very exciting if solar comes out and they start giving us more ability to do damage over time dots as you know in mmos with solar abilities and arc i don't again arc will probably be very <laughs> Very simple, it's probably gonna be chaining, right? Multiple chains of damage against multiple enemies. Um, so I'm, in, I'm thinking that's gonna be the three main components for the three, but Void also has invisibility and, you know, kinda inherently in there. So we'll see what, they, what they're thinking. Um, say the key word with the Void 3.0 update, we're defining a set of core keywords that will be used by the various perks and abilities within each Void subclass akin to slow freeze and shatter verbs used by stasis. So we're going to get some insight on exactly what they're thinking. Each class will specialize in a few of these verbs, but it will be possible to dabble in the rest by coordinating with your fire team or with certain combination of abilities and fragments. This is getting exciting, y'all. Additionally, these verbs will appear in other places outside of the subclass screen, weapon perks, exotic armor, and mods from your seasonal artifact. And we intend to continue expanding that list as we move forward. We believe that these systematic interactions between your abilities and your gear are the core of the Destiny build crafting game. With Void, there are three negative side effects that you'll be applying to enemies. Here we go. They're going to give it to us. Suppression. 
The target is knocked out of an active abilities and can't activate any abilities movement modes as long as suppression persists. Afflicted enemy AI combatants, combatants can't shoot their weapons. Exactly what I just stated right there, Sage Wisdom. That's exactly what I thought Void would do without looking at it. That's suppression. Now, Weaken. Now, this is something different. I didn't think about this. The target takes increased damage and has their movement slowed. Enemy AI combatants fire their weapons with decreased accuracy. So this is big. So Void will um, do a weaken or apply a weaken status. I want to just stop real quick and tell you how exciting it is that these statuses are going to be continue to be applied to the game. And this is really going to look like an MMO light by the beginning of Lightfall. This game is really going to be looking like an MMO light game um, or MMO RPG with all these statuses, because, you know, status effects is a big thing in MMOs. So this is this is very exciting for the that progression from kind of a shooter RPG open world game um, to a MMO light like they described. The third is volatile. Interesting. The target is afflicted with unstable void energy and will explode upon taking additional damage or on death. So it's kind of like that bomb effect where you can uh, you will inflict volatile. And then they'll be inflicted with a status effect. And the more damage you pump into them, they'll explode and cause AOE damage. So this will be able to do void will be able to do uh, suppression, weaken and potentially volatile, which will cause AOE damage probably and spread maybe weaken. Maybe have an effect where um, volatile uh, exploding enemies with the volatile status apply weaken to whoever they touch or explode on. And so you can it listen, the combinations are endless, but I'm sure that's something that they're thinking about. And three positive effects that you'll be applying to yourself and allies. Ooh, so we got both negative effects, three negative, and we're adding three positive. Void overshield. A protective barrier of void light reduces damage taken from combatants. Invisibility. We know about this one already. You vanish from sight and do not appear on enemy radar devour you feast on the energy of your foes kills restore you to full health grant grenade energy and extend devour Whew. now that's that's nice these verbs should all be familiar to veteran players but now exist in a new broader systematic framework that will allow us to consistently spread their behaviors across the game where previously they mostly existed in their own siloed off subclasses this is great so Void is going to basically um, apply a lot of status effects and it's going to be your uh, suppression, your weak and your volatile and Void Overshield, Divisibility or Devour. All three of those um, on the positive side are already kind of in the game, but they're going to be able to be added to any subclass via the aspects and fragment system. So you can definitely get your customization on moving forward. Old dogs, new tricks. To close this section out, here's a preview of some of the new and updated abilities that you'll be able to play with once Void 3.0 drops. Whew, let's see. Night Stalker Hunter, Shadow Shot, Mobius Quiver, Super. Fire two volleys of three Void Arrows in a cone, which seek out enemies and spawn Void Anchors on impact. Shadow Shot makes tethered enemies volatile. There you go. And deals increased damage to tethered targets. There you go. So basically, just like Shadow Shot does now, um, basically in a similar fashion, Volatile is going to be applied. But right now, it's they are suppressed and they take more damage, but there's no verbs attributed to those status effects. So those uh, Volatile will be kind of Volatile and suppressed will kind of be the thing they do. One of the main usability pain points of the current iteration of Mobius Quiver is having to press the super input a whole bunch of times to fire each arrow individually, which is cumbersome and takes a lot of time and often results in the player drifting somewhere they didn't intend to be off the side of a cliff as a totally hypothetical example. I've seen it before. By firing multiple arrows at once, it should be a lot easier to blanket an area with traps in preparation for a fight or put burst damage on a boss. So basically what they're saying is you're going to hit a button and the guardian itself, once it goes into its arrow quiver motion, is going to shoot off those three arrows 
for you. You won't have to shoot each one individually. Um, now, I don't know if you could hold them. Wait, you know, there was like some strategies to holding those arrows for hunters. I haven't really played the, the shadow shot um, class too much, but I'm sure the veteran hunters may or may not like that change. Stylish executioner aspect. Defeated, defeating a weakened, suppressed, or volatile, all of the negative effects, statuses, or verbs, as they say, grants invisibility and true sight. After performing a stylus execution, your next melee attack while invisible weakens enemies. So that's adding your execution, um, you know, your finishers um, will invisible weakens, you know, will weaken the next enemy that you place. A twist on Middle Tree Night Soccer's current flawless execution perk. This aspect lets the hunter specialize in defeating debuff enemies to keep looping their invisibility. So you'll be able to defeat um, a weakened ability, um, stylus execution, and while invisible, it weakens the enemy, and you just keep keep refreshing that. Um, so you might have a uh, Night Stalker, you know, on your team. He's gonna be invisible a lot. And in PvP, that sounds really, really, really stupid, um, but we'll see how it works. Sentinel Titan. I love how they left the Warlock for last. Overwatch Aspect. Cast a Void Empowered Barricade to grant a Void Overshield to yourself and nearby allies. The, empower the Empowered Barricade slowly regenerates the Void Overshield of allies bunkering behind it. So as long as you stay behind the barricade, it will continue to kind of like when you're in your well of radiance, it can, the, that bar continues to fill up. The void overshield will continue to fill up as you're behind it. We want players to be able to lean into the Sentinel fantasy of being the frontline protector for your team. So Overwatch is a powerful tool for setting up prior to an encounter and providing a safe haven to fall back to when things get spicy. Shield toss, projectile and melee. Hurl your shield towards an enemy. The shield can ricochet off enemies and surfaces, granting you a small chunk of void overshield for each enemy hit. We want to give Titans more options when it comes to projectile melees. Shield toss is a great choice for aggressively pushing forward into groups of enemies, softening them up and giving you extra staying power. That sounds amazing as well. And here we go. Star of the show. The Warlocks. Voidwalker Warlock, Pocket Singularity, Projectile Melee. Launch a tracking unstable ball of void energy that detonates and when it and when it near it nears an enemy, pushing targets away from the blast and making them volatile. Okay. So that is going to be that AoE. So this is going to specialize in that AoE. It kind of already does that now, but when you shoot it, it's going to also explode, pushing people, you know, kind of pushing them back but also making them volatile so that if you apply more damage to them, guess what? They're also gonna explode. And then you may be able to defeat them within weapon that, ex you know, what enemies you defeat spread volatile to the next enemy. So you can keep, just keep doing that. Child of the old gods aspect. Okay, this is one of the aspects, here we go. Cast your rift to summon a sentient black hole which hovers at your side. This sounds amazing. This sounds absolutely crazy. Waiting for a target. It will launch itself at enemies, then begin siphoning their energy and weakening them, refunding their life force back to you as either grenade and melee energy if you are using a healing riff or health if you are using an empowering riff. This is amazing. That is one of the best aspects that I'm excited. That got me a little bit excited. I'm, I'm left for words. We'll finish. We'll finish off defeating enemies who are being siphoned by the child will refund some rift energy. So you can. So if they're being siphoned and you defeat that enemy, you'll get some of your rift energy back. Obviously, you can add that with different mods in order to really get the rift rolling. Child of the Old Gods is a strong debuff tool that gives Void Walkers an additional way to lock down an area while sustaining themselves. Ooh. This is nice. So this is giving them some sustain with that rift, um, a little additional sustain, because I'm sure while you're in the rift, it still is going to be healing you, but you're also going to get a little bit more healing, uh, self sustain. So you're going to be able to handle these void. This is my thought with this aspect. 
Voidwalker Warlocks are going to be able to handle areas by themselves. So the team can do things. They can be self-sufficient and maybe handle a group of enemies by themselves while the team does something else. So that's that's big. We hope that this preview sparks your curiosity and gets you thinking about cool new void builds. Have you ever to run, have you ever wanted to run Spectral Blades and Vanishing Step? Ward of Dawn and Controlled a Demolition, Handheld Supernova and Devour. Yes, please. There are a lot of new possibilities. And as we get closer to the Witch Queen, we'll be back in future TWABs to talk more about the supers, fragments, and grenades you'll be mixing and matching. We're really excited about that, about what we're cooking up, and we can't wait for you to get your hands on it. In the meantime, check out the ability balance update that we released in Season of the Lost and Destiny 2 update. 3.3.0. Thanks for your time and see you soon. And that completes the Void 3.0 subclass kind of preview. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What I'm seeing so far is big. It's going to be a big game changer for Destiny 2, the Witch Queen, when the Witch Queen comes out. If this is what they're talking about, once the season, season five, goes through. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a big game changer on the outlook of the game. Um, this is getting very in depth. And of course, there's going to be strong aspects, uh, strong fragments. A lot of people are going to go with meta builds. But if most of the builds are viable to give people like you at home the ability to play how you want to play, you know, uh, fill that um, fantasy of whatever you want to do within the game and give you the way a way of achieving that i'm all on board for that that's crazy this is this is big news in the in the description uh, i'm sorry in the comment section below let me know let me know are you guys excited for these changes are you or do you or do you still want or would have preferred darkness subclasses knowing what they're doing with these light subclasses my opinion has changed and I'm excited to see what they do with Solar and Arc and what they add to the systems at hand. But again, it's your boy. So thank you, my fellow sages, for watching the video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see more Nightly Ninja Talks like this. If you want me to delve deeper into Destiny content, make sure you drop a comment below and let me know. More Destiny, LT, more Destiny, and it will be brought on the network but again remember to always always that's right three times always follow your ninja way and i will see you guys tomorrow on the next ninja talk peace